welcome everyone to episode 94 of April Warrior Podcast with Cheer Boys. I'm your host, Michael Respias, and with me as always is your doctor recommended dose of nerdiness, Carlos Rodriguez, aka your nerd today. Carlos, how was your WrestleMania weekend? All right, so <laughs> WrestleMania itself, minus the tornado warning and hail and me stressing about getting a new car <laughs> this weekend. Fucking amazing. <laughs> Two good nights. I know we talked about it. I will get into a look at a little bit of it. I, I personally had fun both nights. Minus yeah. one or two segments. Yeah. I, I'm I can't say that much post WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah. And we'll obviously get into that with what today's episode is, but we can run over it. Let's let's look at some good, some positive mm-hmm. in the universe. The WWE universe. Uh I had just said I will never watch the whole WrestleMania again live. And that's true. I will say I did watch all of WrestleMania this year. I watched Saturday live. I went to our old co-host buddy Walton's house for the first time, his new house with his new bride. Uh, I went out there to go watch it. And thankfully I went out about 5 PM because at 6 PM (laughs) when that hail came and I didn't even know it was coming I was already there, so that was nice, except for the fact that he was waiting for me to get there so he could grill, so we had to wait for the hail to go by so he can grill. Oh, um, at least it was quick. Yeah, yeah, it was not a it was not a very long uh, warning or even hailing, but uh, now Saturday, I could say Saturday because I watched Saturday live, um, basically from start to finish it was fun, like, like you said, it was just yeah. fun, I enjoyed it, um, it ended in a... a a WrestleMania way. Um, and actually, I think that is quite possibly the positive of having two nights is you can have your typical WrestleMania ending on either night and still have a ending that might make sense storyline um, happen the next night. Now, I had work Sunday night. I watched literally when I got to work. I was able to go back and watch from the beginning so i didn't get anything really spoiled except for the fact that um while i was watching and doing my work and pausing i got an email about uh and you're still champion roman reigns t-shirt uh so i knew that before it happened uh, it's like nfl being like hey you're <laughs> yeah yeah you're philadelphia eagles just won the super bowl here's the, all the stuff you could buy i stayed yeah. away from everything else except for that um, but unlike most people, I thoroughly enjoyed that ending. I called that ending. I yeah, felt like, you did. I felt like it was the right ending. Uh, but now Saturday was very fun. Sunday, um, had a little more Vince influence. I felt like, see, I, I hate saying that. I know a lot of people have been getting angry about that. Um, and, and we'll obviously get into that more, but like. There's no saying what Triple H did and what Vince did and what somebody else did. Um, Sunday seemed a little bit off, but purely that was a couple matches to me. Um, the Hell in a Cell, not a big fan when they resort to weapons that quick. The Hell in the Cell is supposed to be its own weapon. Okay. So when you go right to weapons, and not just some weapons, a lot of weapons... You know, it's one thing if they came out with the colored kendo sticks that was a cool, you know, purple. That was kind of cool. I, I thought at least. Yeah. And then hold them there with the kendo stick. And then maybe you bring like a chair out and like that's it. I, I just felt like it was too much. They got there too quick. I felt like they were like in minute 10 of the match in minute one. Like they, I felt like mm. it got there too quick. Um, But that's nitpicking a little bit with Sunday. I felt like overall it was a good um very good show. I can't even say good. Very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where the compliments will stop. Um, because I believe Monday, um, Monday morning, right, we get the news yep. that uh, UFC parent company Endeavor has acquired, merged, however way you want to see this written, uh, with WWE. Basically, they bought out 51 shares controlling shares of the WWE company 
um, 49% stays to the stockholders, all that fun stuff. But the biggest bombshell of all of that is when it was said that Vince McMahon will will hold, you know, his place as I don't know what they call him, executive chairman, whatever the hell it is. He's basically yeah. running WWE again. Uh, it, 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 you know, um, I I hate to say I told you so, and I understand some people's mindsets. I said when we recorded this, and this was back in this. December? I forget when yeah, we recorded it. About, yeah, it was about December. We, we recorded this well after it happened. A lot of shit happened last summer. We were not recording. Um, we decided to do the episode about Vince McMahon and his issues and everything that came to light. And at that point, he was not back. And I had said to you, it's going to happen sooner rather than later. I think we both agreed it was going to happen. Yeah. I said, I don't think they need to wait years in their mind, they just needed some heat to die down, and guess what happened? Some heat died down a little bit, and he was suddenly back just to sell the company. And then a week later, he was suddenly, oh, well, he's just hanging out in Gorilla. And, and uh, oh, he's he's not really doing a whole lot. He's just around. And then you see reports of people were like, scripts got ripped up again. We're right back where we were. Um yeah, and it was noticeable in the product, and I, and we talked about this last week. It's very noticeable in the product. Vince has had a hand in WWE. It just yeah. has been noticeable. Mo- Monday was egregious. Like Monday mm. was a complete 180. Any goodwill from the summer on completely just went out the window. <laughs> AEW had a better Raw after Mania yes. than, uh, than Raw itself. Yeah, uh, and that's the that's the problem, um, you know, for for those of you out there. And I realize I just use terms for those of you out there who might be watching and have no fucking clue what gorilla is and all the other stuff. Um, it's an actual giant ape. Yes. Who yeah. Writes all the script. <laughs> it's a- honestly, it might be better if <laughs> if, a, if a, you know they always that joke like a monkey wrote can write anything. <laughs> honestly, a, a room full of chimps could probably write a better uh, Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, grill position is basically the position right uh, behind the curtain. Um, yes. Named where, after one gorilla monsoon. Yes. Uh, that basically Vince sits there and yells at people and does all this stuff and hugs yeah. hugs people on the way in when they did good. and Gets title thrown at him by Brock Lesnar when he doesn't. And apparently sexually harasses or pays them off when the women's come back, you know. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, for f- WrestleMania, even when WrestleMania has not been good, that Monday has always been like the greatest thing in the world. Like it, it's like another Christmas. Yeah. It's, it's, you got all the WrestleMania fans there. Uh, you got a lot of, um, people who traveled from around the world, uh, you always got a beach ball chant. I mean, when we went in Texas, there, there was the beach ball there. And it sucks when it takes away from a good match. But, you know, it's just fun. It's all that fun. Mm-hmm. And think of it as the Eagles are playing the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night. And everybody's been tailgating all day. Like, that's the that's yeah. the vibe you get. Yeah, it's like the blow off of like a week's worth of partying, even. Yeah. And it's like the one last yeah. hurrah. Yeah, everybody knows they're going home and they're just getting it all out of their system. And it's fun. And you get the NXT call ups and you get some of the returns from injury because WrestleMania is supposed to be the end of like a year. It's supposed to be the, the, the World Series. It's supposed to be all that. So now you're getting the minor league call ups. You're getting people who had been injured for the year now coming back for the new season. It's supposed yeah, to be new fun faces, and nice. Yeah. Yeah, it, Even it, Corey Graves said it this past Monday. It's like, for like, it was basically for newer fans too. He was like, "This is basically like our season opener. Like this is the start of a new year." And it was not. No, it was it was not whatsoever. Chewing this. It was the turd. No, it's fine. No, I got right. it. That's that fine. was probably not the right time to chew something. <laughs> it was a giant turd this year and i will tell you one thing spoilers for dynamite somebody made the right call at the last minute or at least three people made the right call hold on first of all and i will i will i will clear this up for everybody who said that jay white was not signing with wwe 
He was not. He didn't just make a decision recently. FTR apparently has been signed since November. They're just now announcing it. This stuff was not something that happened recent. Jay White was not going there. I was completely wrong. And I could admit it. And apparently Jay White, them showing the Jay White concussion on All Access instead of, I forget who we got the other concussion from, Adam Cole, was mm. probably way more of a hint than I wanted to admit. And just like when people were getting mad because Juice Robinson was showing up with the Bullet Club and they were like, oh, man, they're, they're toying with us. They're making us think it's, it was it's Jay White. It's the lowest White. rung member of uh, Bullet I didn't, Club. I didn't think about that. Think about, Remember I said, oh, they haven't even hinted like they've hinted before. And then I, as I was thinking about it when he finally showed up was, oh, crap, they did hint at it. Um, they just didn't make it as obvious. I think it was a lot of people trying to read into it. Um, but, yeah, they did make a hint at it. And, yeah, AEW, not to make this about AEW, but AEW had a way better Monday night. They had Jay White. Um, they, they signed Jay White, uh, FTR. Um, won the, the tag, tag titles, tag and yep. now they're re-signed with AEW. You know, they had guns. A, ha- I'm not gonna lie, guns had a great match against them too. And that entrance, like the entrance, the entrance felt at the you know many they, men. They had a WrestleMania style entrance. Hell yeah! You know, and at the announcement, uh, which we we will ab- absolutely be talking about next week. Yeah. Uh, it, it sucks because whenever stuff like that happens, and we want to talk about it tonight, but pushing news that happened on monday for news that happened on wednesday is kind of tough uh and so, arguably i mean that news big don't get us wrong this one just a little bit bigger yeah it's purely now if this was happening next week no you yeah. know we'd push off the other cut but we we got time we got time for those who are even remotely curious um AEW's bring back all in, which they've now been doing all out. All in was what was before AEW when all the indie companies kind of worked together to put on one big show. And that's actually yeah. birth, uh, basically the birth of AEW, yeah. shown that there was an audience for it and people would show up. They sold out. They sold out a small stadium. We're told it was never going to happen. They small. They sold out a big stadium. Was told it was never going to happen. And now they are going to be at Wembley Stadium in London, England, um, which holds ninety thousand plus. So but can they do it again? A lot of people seem to think that. Uh, at least I'm, I'm reading, you know, out there in the Twitterverse that that may be one huge hint at somebody returning. But we'll talk about that next week. Um, no. I don't even want to mention it. I don't want to put that out in the universe yet. You say three times he uh, he hurts himself. <laughs> <laughs> and then blames it on uh, fucking EVPs that don't know how to run a target. Hey, as long as he hurt, <laughs> as long as he hurts himself in London, they still got him there. That's true. That's uh, true. <laughs> so, back back to the topic. Uh, since since WrestleMania was at least relevant to that, so Monday morning we find that out. Monday night, um, it's weird because not only did it have Vince McMahon's fingerprints all over it, and I don't care what anybody says that. <sighs> There's a lot of writers out there, uh, it, and who you tend to believe kind of depends on your own preference. It's like anything else. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you got Dave Meltzer out there. You have Wade Keller out there. You have Sean Ross Sapp out there. Um, those are usually three of the biggies. You know, uh, people either swear by them or think they're full of shit. Uh, I tend to lean towards Sean Ross Sapp, even though a lot of people seem to have issues with the fact that he seems to uh, put a lot of shit behind paywalls, but let's be honest, we eventually get Motherfuckers to... Motherfuckers gotta get paid, man. Exactly. <laughs> if, if, we, if we were that big, we'd be doing the same thing. Fuck um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of conflicting information, but it seemed like... And now, it's funny, some people are backtracking. Um, it seemed like they were all pretty much in agreement that Vince was not only there Monday... But that he had ripped up a script four times, um, things that were supposed to happen, which is funny because I seen the order of Monday Night Raw at about noon on Monday, and it was missing two things, uh, three things technically, well, uh, three things maybe. I don't know. Um, it was not supposed to have tag team champion uh, chip qualified match. It was supposed to be for the women's title. 
Um, okay. They were supposed to be like two triple threat matches or something like that. Uh, so, and um, I think it might have just been that, where there was supposed to be another match, and then that, uh, then it was supposed to be Bailey was supposed to come out with damage control, and then they decided she don't come out. And now it's coming out that they were trying to save her because they knew they were going to lose. But, like, the Street Profits getting a tag title match. Um, I did not watch Raw, but from the sounds of it, Sami Zayn never mentioned Usos. No. Like, they talked and never mentioned Usos. No, no not really. continuity, no. no him with the bloodline no. and finally going over. Nothing. Street I mean, they, they address like, that they, they could do anything, kind of, like, WWE yeah. Universe thinking. Thanking themselves, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Owens, someone. Uh, I, I think it's a Public Enemies podcast on Twitter. I love them. You gotta follow them. They're hilarious. And they put like uh, Kevin Owens right now. It was a Snoop Dogg. He's like, I like to thank me and me because I got to do you know like you know like that speech he has when he has the High Will Walk of Fame thing. <laughs> nah. Um, I, I watched Raw until about I want to say nine thirty, ten. And collectively, and I'm not even shitting you because I still have a, a group chat with the interest rate folks. Me, Mark, and uh, Nick all just like at the same time text each other. I'm fucking done. I'm done with this shit. This shit is fucking stupid. I'll just find out what the fuck happens tomorrow morning. I'm going to bed. Like Nick was like, I'm going to bed. Mark, I'm going to bed. And me, I was like, I'm watching fucking anime because <laughs> I, I need something to cleanse the fucking palate of horrible shit. I, I want to watch this fucking rubber fucking pirate beat the shit out of somebody i i i watched shout out to one piece by the way there's a lot of fucking wrestling references in that we'll talk about that another time <laughs> i watched clone wars instead i've read fucking I, even better yeah read Jesus the Christ, anything's I, better i watched i'm 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 finishing up season three which actually walton congratulated me on because he listened to our episode last week and he said he only got to the first half but he was like you're actually watching clone he was like i've never even watched it i was like i that's how I am. I got to go from beginning <laughs> to end, but that's Don't that just shows you how I'll bad. That just shows you how bad Dodo is. It just shows you how bad <laughs> they've been. And, and, All right, Chad. Can we get can we get rest pass to watch one thousand and thirty episodes of One Piece? Hey, <laughs> once I'm done I'll, with Star yeah, Wars, I it. got something to do. I they they want me to watch Lord of the Rings. I feel like there's not enough Lord of the Rings to take over my time like Star Wars has because I'm yeah. watching all the other stuff. You know, I'm watching everything yeah, yeah. with Star Wars. There's a lot. I I don't even think I realized how much there was like I was getting into. And now I'm there. Like I yeah. I'm about to start season four. Like once I get done Clone Wars, I'm like there's no looking back. I'm then. Mm-hmm. So it's Bad Batch. It's fucking Mando. <laughs> it's fucking everything. Um. So. Not to get on. I love how See, we go off topic, it, I love but it. it's funny because it, we want to, <laughs> we have to. I, if we sat here and just shit on WWE for so, like an hour and ten minutes, we were going to depress ourselves and probably not want to do this anymore. It would look, it would look like the the chat for the bump yesterday. <laughs> yeah, where I, everything was fire, Vince McMahon. I, Fuck I, Vince McMahon. I actually meant to switch my thing to hashtag fire events uh, this will that will be <laughs> I'll on, do it don't make it. Hold on, this will be on our youtube hashtags this will be on all of our hashtags i don't care if that is not a thing three months from now it'll constantly it, you're gonna see hashtag apen work hashtag fire events it's just gonna stay there um it needs to it's correct uh, he needs to I get had, fired stop touching this wire um listen this is what's gonna happen man triple h is gonna quit on friday and before the Wembley show, AW, they're going to be like, you know, we got a new creative li- lead. His name is Paul Lefquist. <laughs> and the wrestling world will be turned asunder. All right. So <laughs> let's let us let us dig a little bit deeper here into this acquisition because that's technically – this is not a, a fuck Vince episode. This is not a – um. I mean, it, it'll turn. We're into giving that. you facts, goddammit. it! It'll turn into that, but we're we're less than Very twenty. Quickly. We're less than twenty minutes in, and there's not a whole lot of this information. We are not a financial podcast. We are not going to be sitting here and digging into it. No. I I will say from from everything that I've seen, I've already talked about the fifty one forty nine split for Endeavor. Um, they are merging, not acquiring, uh, with UFC. Uh, with a va- they, I think from what I've seen, they valued it at nine million. I guess so. I'm assuming they paid a little over four whatever million dollars or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, um, WWE I think is is labeled at nine, right? Yeah. And then, they, they, all together is twenty one million, right? Or twenty one billion. Well, that's 
Um, that's what it was. That's combined for UFC and WWE that they're they're mm-hmm. they're combining yeah. them to become it. But yeah, so they acquired WWE at a valuation of nine point three billion. So if they bought fifty one percent, I mean we're talking four point eight or Seven, whatever the yeah, hell it is. Like that, yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, you know, they, they they bought it out for that much. I, I believe, if I remember right, guys got bonuses. Um, you know, oh Triple H got paid. Yeah. Vince got paid. Stephanie well, got paid. Nick Khan got paid. Because like they they still have mm. their stock and shit. But yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of money getting thrown around. But yeah, so basically when they they did this um, on ESPN, uh, what what's the the guy who runs Endeavor's name? Ariel Ari Ari Emanuel. Ari Emanuel. Yeah. Uh, so he he basically said you know he's still gonna run you know Endeavor. Uh, but he's going to. Uh, Nick Khan's expected to remain as president of the Wrestle and mm-hmm. Operations. Dana, Dana White Stouffer, will continue yeah. the president for UFC. So even though they're combining into one thing, I think it's more for stock purposes. And, you know, like I said, well, it's like Google, a- right? Like Alphabet now is like the controlling company of Google and Waze and all that other shit. Yeah, well, f- Facebook is meta. Mm hmm. Um, so that's what got, Endeavor is going to be that, yeah. Yeah, so Ende- Endeavor is just a company that watches over them. So really there shouldn't be any changes, at least yet. You know, it's like anything else. They start – UFC changed over time, but mm-hmm. they didn't change right away. They, they allowed, you know, their shit to happen. But Dana White was still control over there, and Vince McMahon – um will remain the chairman okay so that that was the the word i was looking for earlier the the chairman of the wwe so funny that how this all worked out that he's stepping down and retiring um he's only coming back to sell and i think we even mentioned this on that episode why wouldn't somebody who has no intention of actually retiring sell to anybody who's going to make him step down uh i even seen and i don't know how true this is this is me just purely throwing a rumor that i seen at some point i don't even know how much and i'm not even going to look it up i'm just going to say it you should take this for what you want uh that there was like a potential lawsuit out there to look into the sale Oh, yes, um, I did. That was like this morning I heard about it, yeah. Yeah, I, I know there was rumors floating around, I think even on Tuesday, uh, where I originally had seen it. Um, at, I don't know how this stuff works. I'm sure there's going to be people throwing shit out there, um, especially like current shareholders, uh, people who wanted Vince out to begin with. Um, you know, then you have this whole hashtag fire Vince movement because Monday was just awful it just was and tomorrow night it's just a it's a culmination though like it's not just like sorry to cut you off but it's yeah, not okay. just monday right like monday Basically. is like the fucking yeah yeah fair. <laughs> monday is like the fucking like whipped cream on top of oh, that sounds horrible i don't know why on a cake <laughs> and then like it, all the sexual assault stuff is like the cherry on top like it's just like so much <laughs> is so wrong with this whole situation yeah let alone their fucking mustache is horrible. <laughs> just outright, that's also just horrible. Like, all right, listen, how do I distinguish myself and make sure that I don't look as, like, a sexual assault or <laughs> sexual predator anyway? You know what I'll do? Get a thin mustache, dye it. Like, no, that's the opposite of what we asked you, Vince. Just stay the fuck out. Get your money. I, get I, the fuck out. Like we mentioned in the episode, pull a J.K. Rowling. Huh. Get your money sell and get the fuck out of here let us enjoy this fucking property for years vince has given us all one big fuck you and he knows better i'm convinced that he looks the way he does because he's like you're going to call me a sexual predator i'm going to look like one (laughs) and i'm still going to run this damn company he's still crazy enough that yeah that sounds right (laughs) Um, <laughs> I you know it's funny. Everybody's had their things, and I think he looks like Gomez from um, the Adams Family. I've seen a lot of people go that route. That that was the first thing that came to mind when I seen him. I don't know if you ever seen. I don't know how much you are into just random movies. Um, yeah. Heart, Heartbreak Kid with Ben Stiller. Yes. Uh, <laughs> with his his dad plays his dad yep. in a Jerry Stiller, 
And I know it's not dark, but he's got that little cheesy mustache, and his hair mm-hmm. is dyed red. And it's just this he old looks man. Just like that. Yep. With super, and, and that's why I'm like, he looks just like him, like mm-hmm. way older than what he's clearly trying to portray himself as with this fucking dyed hair. It, it's a mix between that and. Um, JJ. You ever watch The Office? Oh yeah. yeah. When when um when Creed uh when Ryan comes back and he's trying <laughs> yes. to get rid of all the old people and, and Michael's doing the whole how you can't fire old people and, <laughs> and he's like he's like why do, why do people hate old people and he goes because 'cause they're lame while he's got the printer ink running down his head <laughs> and his hair. Like yep. I don't know. It's it's That's ve- exactly <laughs> it is very uh it's awful. But I feel like I feel like it's on purpose. I just I feel like He's it, just been it's fucked up because the second you said that, I was like, yeah, that I, sounds like Vince. I, it's so sad. It's so sad. And, and they said, I, I know you posted it. It said, oh, but like I'm a, I'm a psychic or whatever. And somebody said, oh, it was obvious. Yeah. I, I think they're thinking I just said this. I think we all knew he was coming back. But literally, we recorded the episode, and I said it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Like, very soon. Because I knew WrestleMania time was starting to come up. And Vince would not allow WrestleMania to go without him. So, it's funny. He showed up right around time when you start those storylines. When Royal Rumble's right around the corner. When you're starting, that's when he started showing back up. And I uh, I don't know. It's, it's ridiculous. He clearly got people... Uh, how many times did we hear about him and Dana White were actually friends because they respected each other of how they did. I, because, uh, honestly, if Trump was in a position, I wouldn't doubt that Trump would have bought WWE. And, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not surprised yeah. that it's somebody who's openly said they respect Vince McMahon. Yeah, yeah, not um, anybody like Disney, Fox, Comcast, yeah. Amazon, not even the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure they got way... Like, I think that's, that's the other thing, too. Like, I think I've read somewhere, again... This is me on very little research. I, this is not a financial podcast. Uh, I glance over a lot of shit. Uh, I think I seen that like the valuation they gave was like point f- like five hundred million over what Vince originally had said he thought it was worth or something like that. Yeah. Like I don't know. It's just it's it's suspicious. Um, I don't know 100%. what can actually be done about any of this. I assume after a while, if Vince is becoming a detriment, which he will never become a detriment, and that's the problem here. That is the biggest problem. It's the um, the CM Punk, um, Vince McMahon's a millionaire that should be a billionaire. He's going to make money in spite of himself, and that's exactly the truth. The product means nothing. It it means nothing. If mm-hmm. McDonald's keeps selling their burgers and everybody says it tastes like shit, but they keep selling their burgers, what incentive do they have to change it? There is no need to. The bottom line is they're making more money than they probably ever have. Mm-hmm. Currently, they are making more money than they ever have. Why do they care? Why do they care? They're making I know. money. I mean, looking at this Associated Press, like... Uh, article right the company is also a social media powerhouse it surpassed 16 billion social video views in the final quarter of last year it, nearly 94 million youtube subscribers and it has more than 20 million followers on tiktok its female wrestlers comprise five out of the top 15 most followed female athletes in the world across facebook twitter and instagram led by ronda rousey with 36.1 million followers wow there's a lot of people who just deny fucking sandy hook okay um no fuck them <laughs> I don't know if y'all do or not. <laughs> um, I mean, fuck you if you do. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, that's that's crazy. W had more than 7.5 billion digital and social media views in January and February of this year, up 15% from the same time frame a year ago. And WrestleMania 39 had more than 500 million views and 11 million hours of videos consumed over the two days of the event at 42% increase over last year year damn yeah i I mean and that's that's the problem it's wwe is now becoming like you're watching i don't know i don't know how to compare it i I don't know is there is there a show 
Um, I'm trying to think of anything that like everybody. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll throw it out. Game of Thrones. You talked Thrones about game. anime, right? Yeah. Um, I'll use this for a reference. Dragon Ball Z, right? That's probably the most basic of anime. If you're not into ma- anime, you might have grown up into Dragon Ball Z, right? I, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just using that as a reference. No, here. no, you're right. I, I that's, think that's a lot, a, a lot of people who are not into anime still watch it. I've never watched it. I don't know that there's anything that's ever going to change for me to watch it. It doesn't mean that a whole bunch of other people don't like it. It's just not going to be my cup of tea. I tried it. I didn't like it. I don't know. It's never going to be my cup of tea. And that's what WWE is. WWE is never... uh, We want it to be. It's there in front of us. It's fucking out there. And that's why Dragon Ball Z might not even be like a current good enough current reference I, I don't know it's for people out there who don't like football and then trying to watch something on sunday during football season mm-hmm. <laughs> like uh, yeah. and, and, and like uh, baseball hold on uh, great baseball with all the pitch clock and all the shit they're doing now right they're trying to change it for people that's great and all but let's be honest here if you don't like baseball you're not gonna like baseball with a pitch clock you're just not it excites the game more for me, but let's be honest, I'm only going to watch it in person just like I would only watch it in person before the pitch clock. You're not suddenly going to change all these people's minds who have spent years of not liking this and saying, here's a little twist, here you go. WWE is making money. They are who they are. It's it, And that's where this whole reference, and this is all thrown all over, this is a very bad single reference. <laughs> like NFL is talking about doing uh, Thursday. Um, yeah. flex more right? nights yeah. right so they they uh, for those who don't know the nfl during the end of the season they'll flex games on sunday um sunday night they'll leave sunday night open and they'll flex it near the end of the season so they can get games that mean something for the playoffs to be on sunday night and it might be monday night i don't know i know they did saturdays at one point so it's usually like It'll be 1 or 4 o'clock, and it might get moved to the night game. They can adjust. I think 1 and 4 o'clock the last couple seasons now get to pick their own games, too, and all this shit. So they're talking about doing it with Thursday. And the biggest problem with that is if you're going to travel to another city and watch a game, you've got to do that shit early. you got to get hotel tickets. So if you're going for a game that's originally scheduled for a Sunday and you took off for monday and all this stuff and you took off friday and you're flying out friday and then you find out the week before that bam that game's on thursday you're fucked yeah you're fucked i even if you can cancel all that stuff you're still you probably request it off probably not getting those days back now you're just sitting at your house on a friday being reminded that you didn't go to that game and you could try to resell them and what if you can't resell the tickets and all this other shit you're fucked but guess what? The NFL doesn't care. They don't care. No. They, they don't, don't care. care at all. Because they already got your money. They already got your money. And guess what? More people are going to watch on TV now. People are going to watch on TV. And that's really what this is about. It's about the next Thursday night contract being way more money. So they can say, look how many people watch on TV. It's like all these Monday Night Rolls when people are joking. Kind of like the AEW where they show, hey, look how much open space there is. And people were doing that with Raw. Mm -hmm. WWE don't care. No, they got your money. If it's too expensive for you to go watch, you're watching from home. That pumps up the viewers, which pumps up how much money they get because people are watching from home. They don't care. They're making enough money to make up for any of those losses on those nights. And it just they don't care. So no, they don't. I mean, look, look, look at I'm the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Right before we started filming, what did I say? Talking all this shit about WWE. What's what did I say? Instant purchase. I bought a WWE (laughs) shirt. I bought the Puerto Rican LWO shirt because that's something I've wanted since I was a kid. And for whatever reason, LWO and WCW was all Mexicans. That's fine. I mean, there's Puerto Rican people, you know. I mean, but you know, they weren't in WCW. It's fine. Tavia Vega was in WWE. Yeah, but. I saw it today, literally f- within five minutes, it was in my cart and purchased. Like, I got off my fat ass and got my credit card. I was like, oh, shit, I got to, uh, what's my pin, you know, uh, I-, I did all that shit just to buy this shirt. I am part of the problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like they don't need. I, I'm talking shit, and I spent thirty two dollars of my money. No problem. Right. Yeah. And in my head, I was like, "Oh, free shipping. That's cool." They, they don't need. They don't need to charge shipping. Who the fuck cares? I, I you know what, and that's where um. With this merger, a lot of people are talking about because UFC has their their pay per views through ESPN Plus, and they're like seventy, eighty dollars pay per view. So a lot of people think that they're eventually going to move to that model, and, and I think they'll crunch the numbers. But right now, right now WWE is very much on a um uh a gym membership, a, mm-hmm. a, a Planet Fitness gym membership. That's that's what WWE is right now. People just get Peacock, they have it, and they just let that shit roll through. Because oh, in no. their mind, I got it for WrestleMania, I got it for Royal Rumble. Eh, I can watch Stone Cold's podcast here and there. I can go watch some old shit when I want. Right now, it is five, ten bucks a month, whatever the fuck it is for the premium, all this other stuff. It is a very low price that's just rolling through, and you're forgetting about it. January rolled around, you joined it, you watched a couple old clips, you forgot about it. You went back to fucking being lazy and not going to the gym, and that shit just keeps fucking eating away, but it's eating away at such a small amount, it's okay. It don't matter. You're not noticing yeah. it. Right now, yeah, it's they, like a bug bite. Yeah, yeah, you don't they, even they are it. very much in that model. So you take that model away, it's why WWE's WWE Network had to be nine ninety nine. It had to be. nine ninety nine is a forgettable number. It mm-hmm. just is. Ten bucks a month does not seem like a lot, especially when you look at all this and look at the mid south wrestling and look at this wrestling and that wrestling, and you can get the old ECW. Let's be honest here. For as much as there is, did you even watch five percent of the material that was on there? No, I'd say. I mean, you- honestly, I even tried to. I I I made a goal for myself to watch every pay per view from like the earliest one they had WCW, like in order. Right, and I got maybe five in. I, I I'm say, like, wow, three hours is a lot. I'd say mm. most people haven't. I, my brother, my brother would watch the old WCW Nitros, and he just watch them all the way through. But half the time, he'd have it playing on his laptop while he's like playing PlayStation or while he's watching basketball. Like I've literally just watched him. He just lets it run in the background. It's like the way I wa- I rewatch The Office now. It's just background noise where you get yeah. to laugh every once in a while. Um, so he's one of the few people, but like, let's be honest, we it's the same thing. Oh my God, Planet Fitness, I'm going to get pumped. And then you go to the gym and then you walk on a treadmill and then yeah. you show up once every couple of months because you remember you have it. Um, and that's, that's what Peacock is. And, mm-hmm. and so you take that away with a product that like, I don't know. It, it, it's weird because like, would you pay... Seventy dollars for your kids to watch something that just came out on Disney Plus. No, but yeah, would you pay you know. for Disney Plus monthly to make sure your kids can watch it all the time? Fuck well, yes, and that's what this is. If it's not for exactly. you, it's for your kids, and that's what this is. And and they they have a very good thing going. I, I don't see them fucking around with it. I know a lot of people. I don't see WWE with fucking with it, and I don't see. I don't think Endeavor NBC will. fucking with it. Well, I, I don't think it de- – see, th- and this is now going to come down to Endeavor and what they mm. want. But it's not the same deal. People don't line up at Hooters or – Yeah, for WWE pay-per-views. Yeah, yeah. yeah, UFC has a different feel where that's a big group thing. So a lot of bars and stuff will buy it. They, they'll they get them from those type of – even if people mm-hmm. ain't showing up to it, they, they'll just buy it. Because they know some people will be there for it. And all it takes is a couple people to want to watch the whole UFC fight. And now they're drinking beers. They'll make their money back on just a handful of people. It don't have to be a shit ton. Um, so I just don't I don't see it turning into that. Um, they're doing what they're doing. And they're only going to cut money more. You're going to see more um, Bad Bunny. More Logan Paul. More Ronda Rousey. You're probably going to see more um, ex UFC fighters. Yeah, um, Daniel Cormier is going to have a show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Like that. They're they're going to be definitely. That's why um, I know that the whole thing about Cody and Brock Lesnar and a lot of people have issues with that. With saying Vince had a say in that. I told you the right call was Roman winning. 
I don't think it was as bad as everybody's making it out. As I said, that was Cody's quest. It was not Roman's quest. You don't take away 900 plus days of Roman on Cody's quest. And apparently, it, this is all speculation. Um, the reason why that ended up being the way it was did have a little bit to do with Vince in the fact that Vince wanted Cody to main event WrestleMania. But I think because it didn't make sense to finish off mm -hmm. Roman's reign with Cody in that spot, that's why Roman was going over because it didn't make sense. And, and now if we're going to get in this whole thing where now we have heel Brock um, and, and Cody overcoming and then Cody eventually overcoming. I, I realize this has a little bit to do with Roman getting past a thousand days and all this other shit. Yeah, it, it, it's layered. And yeah. it, I wasn't even talking about it with Nick. Like, we, we were thinking that it might have been, you're selling the company the next day. Who do you want as champion, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you no. want the biggest star we've created since John Cena? Or do you want the guy who purposely tried to take WWE out of business and that, and a that, year ago? That's why Brock is starting a main event level program right now think about mm -hmm. all the rumors we were hearing that he was gone vince is out he's gone you know why he's here he's not here because of vince he's here because ufc fucking loves brock lesnar and now they'll get to use brock lesnar without yeah. and he can't fight in ufc so now that company that they're able to keep him there you're going to see a lot of brock lesnar you're going to see a lot of ronda rousey I wouldn't be surprised if you see Brock as like a, a commentator for special matches or some kind of like program. Because even just recently as this week, like Daniel Cormier, which is funny because him and like Brock didn't like each other back in the day, sat down and, and had a really just honest talk interview, which is so funny because like this is besides the point. But like Brock as a person, fucking love hearing him talk. He's like such a normal fucking weirdo he, like he, I am. He's very much <laughs> keep to himself. And a lot of people, yeah. I think, think of him like what CM Punk's visualized as, as like keep to himself dickhead. And I think Brock Lesnar is, he's just like a country, like, I know he's huge and shit and people think that he's bigger than life, but like, he just wants to be left alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, honestly. And I, I get it. I fucking get it. He's just in this position of, because of his size, his ability and all this stuff that he's getting pushed so much. I mean, again, yeah. he's not the most realistic person who's ever come into wwe ever even before his ufc stint like even in 2005 and even in 2006 like all that time like he was like when you saw him he was that dude you're like yeah no he makes sense as wwe champion yes he makes it like all right he may, he, he's not talking great on the mic but him versus kurt angle makes sense that he's winning him versus this makes sense he's winning then he just came back even stronger after ufc it's like yeah, okay. He makes even more sense now as like a, a the fucking ultimate bad guy. Yeah. And just hearing his interview recently, like yeah, even with that with Cormier, like there's gonna be so much more cross point pro, uh, like pollination. <laughs> there's gonna be like a WWE no, <laughs> cross promotion, yeah. But you, you're gonna see Cormier's probably gonna have a, a WWE show down the line. He's probably gonna have some kind of podcast similar to Ryan Satin's or or, you know, Corey Graves, and he's going to be talking to people. He's going to be talking to Rousey, all this stuff. Or he's going to have some kind of segment show similar to Greg. It's fucking weird that we're talking about this. Greg Miller has a fucking show on the WWE Network, and it's fucking popular. He has his own fucking t-shirt. He was at WrestleMania. What the fuck? Like, you're going to see shit like that more. I wouldn't doubt that you're going to start seeing some of these press conferences shit come off a little bit more um, like UFC. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think they they it's already kind of become that way, and and that's thanks to AEW. I, I don't care yeah. what anybody says. WWE start no, doing true, this more true. often. As, once, as much once. as I don't want AEW to do it anymore because of Punk's situation, <laughs> I also now I'm like, wow, no, it, it's kind of a breath of fresh air. You know, right. it's like it's weird. It kind of like it gives this weird realistic vibe. Like even recently with like Ray, right? Just talking about his, his mask and what the match meant for this past weekend. It was like a, it was like a weird breath of fresh air it yeah. felt nice and you know it's kayfabe and there's all this other shit but like i don't know it just felt nice you'll be watch. getting more of this stuff on espn you know the mm -hmm. whole 100 oh, any, anytime they're feuding you know you get the, the pre-conference with the both guys sitting there talking about their match you'll be seeing seeing shit on espn a little bit more uh see it it's rough 
as a wrestling fan to see this, but I could tell you this was going to happen no matter what. And if anybody thinks that that oh, if only they would have sold to Disney, uh, it would have been on ESPN more. It would have been bundled on Hulu, like WWE Network eventually. None would have been of on these Hulu. companies yeah. were buying WWE because they can be a better wrestling company. Nobody was mm-hmm. going to buy it for that reason. Saudi Arabia was not going to buy it and make it a wrestling company. That's why as much as you want to give the guy shit, you want to sit here and call him a cokehead, you want to sit here and say he's buy- he's playing with daddy's money, Tony Khan gives people what they want because he's a fan first. He did this yeah. purposely because he's a fan. He enjoys this shit. He will give you Jay White from the very fucking beginning of an AEW Dynamite episode. <laughs> yeah, not make you wait to the end. Not make you wait for a pay-per-view. He'll give it to you right then and there. He gives more title matches than I ever expected to be seeing. Mm-hmm. Battle of the Belts has become awful only because of the way they sold it. But like... Now there's 87 belts, the ROH belts and everything like that, that you can just have. They're randomly getting just two hours worth of Friday Rampage because now you got a battle of belts happening afterwards. you got yeah. Forbidden Door 2. You have this all in, in in London, which is happening the week before All Out. Um, which is crazy. He's already talking about the potential of doing a WrestleMania-style weekend where you just have a whole bunch of shit happening, whether it's a multi-night show or you just have it all in one city, which is basically they already have been kind of doing. Usually, like, yeah. if the pay-per-views in Chicago, they're already out there on Wednesday, and you got, they usually have, like, a, a live dynamite, yeah, dynamite, a live ran, rampage, rampage, and then, so I, I think he more wants it to be, I guess when he was talking about it, more, like, where you have, like, the all-access, you have the Hall of Fame, you have all of that, just one big weekend kind which, of like it's a double double or nothing weekend seems to be that way that's it, like almost a like wrestlemania yeah. and, and, and see and i think it, it's rough to hear him say he wants it because it kind of started off that way with all in with the um what's the that the convention thing that oh wrestlecon right uh, uh res- no. no not wrestlecon um the no, thing you're that, talking about the thing oh, that oh starcast was, yeah, Starcast. Starcast. So that mm-hmm. kind of was its thing on the weekend. You had Starcast on Saturday, and then the pay per view was on Sunday. Um, that's kind of how All In started. You had Starcast first, and then you had All In. So I'm assuming it's going to be something like that. You'll eventually have a Hall of Fame. You know, um, we're oh, yeah. we're now I mean, getting into a couple years of this. So uh, all that stuff is just next level for them but the thing is none of that matters in comparison to wwe and it's a weird it's a weird flex from people to say hey um aw is not hitting the same numbers they're failing aw is giving you wrestling wwe is not it's just it it's not monday night they sold a hour first hour no commercials and showed what five minutes of wrestling yeah and i and think i read that there was the a opening storyline was okay <laughs> like it was good but then it wasn't indicative of what the rest of the show would deliver but that's what wwe is and like it's funny because aw will go off on their mjf thing like in long island he he did this whole you know his singing and stuff like that so but cool. like it's entertaining, and it doesn't usually start to show for 20 minutes. Where WWE, yeah. you know the first 20 minutes is usually... Some storyline. Yeah, yeah, it just usually is. Segment. A couple people you know, interrupting and stuff like that. If there's a match, it might end up getting broken up really quick. It's just a whole lot of, it's a whole lot of fluff. It just is. But it's not going to change. It's not going to change. There ain't nothing that's going to change about it. And if and if you, the product was better under Triple H, it was. Um, now, how much of that was him? How much of that was him allowing other people to do their thing? That's all debatable. Mm-hmm. But if anybody thought it was going to get better than that, from a wrestling fan standpoint, I think you would have been disappointed. I just think you would have been disappointed. I don't think it was going to get better. I think what we were seeing was the best we were going to get. And it's like anybody who has been starved 
for years, if I give you burnt pizza after you haven't eaten in a week, you're going to think it's the fucking most delicious thing you've ever eaten. And yeah. that's, that's Triple H's WWE was burnt pizza. You were happy with it. You were just happy with it because everything else has been shit to this point. That You just fucking put some old bay on that shit and you're like oh, this this is tasty the, yeah the only thing for me that that's upsetting about this whole situation is i wanted to see i think i was saying on the show and outside of the show too for a long time i was like i want to see post wrestlemania because you knew like the storylines were kind of set up yeah to at least wrestlemania and maybe some stuff would change to a certain degree what would post wrestlemania that restart with triple h under the the, the belt be Right, and now I don't think we're gonna see that. We're now obviously not gonna see that, even though Vince right. will claim, "Oh, you know, I oversee everything," but he's in the weeds. Like no motherfucker. Like I, yeah, I still get final say. Yeah, we could tell. It shows, <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. Like I hate that we're probably never gonna see that again, or what what that vision was. Um. Uh, and, yeah. I don't know, man. And I, I'm hoping on from the AEW standpoint. I just hope Tony Khan doesn't fuck this up. Because, again, this, he keeps getting break after break after break. And I know that he's giving us wrestling. Don't get me wrong. We're getting, you know, Hijo de Vikingo versus Omega. And that's a fucking amazing match. But, like... I, I, that, I thank you so much for saying it. You know you know how yeah, yeah. how hard of a time me and Walton <laughs> had trying to say his name? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> so, like, we, we got that. And that that's great. And I, I, I'm becoming slowly i'm becoming mark and like i want storylines i want stuff like that i don't mind this four pillar storyline fucking great oh my god and you know we're gonna start building that but like I, he can't drop the ball again man <laughs> you See, know he can't and and that's that's where um that's where both WWE and aw can exist uh wwe is never going to be the wrestling company but what we were seeing under Triple H was better storylines. Storylines that didn't make, like, a very old man giggle. Uh, that's what we yeah. get. Like, like he, he clearly does not like women's wrestling. Um, he clearly has a very yeah. childish attitude when it comes to certain things. Um, he's very much out of touch with what is current. Um so that on that side but you're still not going to get like 90 percent wrestling on episode of raw or a- episode of smackdown yeah. you're just not you're not going to get the same style of wrestling you get in AEW because they still have their way of wrestling that, mm-hmm. that makes sense for tv and all this stuff and that's their way of doing things so certain things are just never going to change on a triple h can they get better yeah can can it, can it be more organized and i think that's what this comes down to organized uh keeping with your vision um not just completely <laughs> ruining storylines and just acting like they didn't happen uh can, you have so many hours of of beforehand right why are you writing the script at the last minute? Why are you tearing stuff up? Like that that's frustrating to me. And it's all continuity. They spent so much money bringing all these writers in there. Uh, th- the storyline should just be better. They, they just should. Yeah, uh, at they, this it, point, yeah. And and they probably would be. And it's one of those things you can't blame anybody other than Vince. It, enough information has come out from old writers and everything like that that like this is Vince. It, it's just not it's it's not anybody besides mm-hmm. him. And and that's I think the biggest issue right now is is like WWE from what I want to watch will never be better than AEW. AEW when it was at its worst, and that was not that long ago, uh, was still more entertaining to me than WWE with the bloodline and with the whole intrigue of Wyatt recently. It just was better, but that's mm-hmm. because it gives me what I want. I want some fluff and a lot more wrestling. I, I could do with a little less of high flying stuff, a little more technical wrestling at times. Um, but I'm not getting any of that over at WWE. No, I'm that's just true. not. I'm not getting any of it. So I'd rather take the high flying shit every single match. But have matches, have actual 15, 20 minute matches 
and not three to five minute matches with seven interviews and then another three minute match and then oh let's make a four and four random women's match just to get a bunch of women on here yeah and uh, a two minute one at that yeah so like it, it's just a whole lot of i don't know I, I, there, there nothing was going to make me suddenly choose wwe or aw and, and that's that's where all this is if you're an actual wrestling fan if you're wwe there is different versions of us out there and it's okay it's absolutely okay we are not all created equal we don't there are people out there that want old school wrestling and that shit ain't yeah. coming back I'm sorry it ain't coming back guys are too athletic nowadays they don't have to rely on a lot of the shit that they used to have to rely on back then they're on tv way more now than they were before they're out in the public eye way more now than they ever were before People can see their old stuff way more now than they ever could before. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just a whole lot of reasons why that that mentality and that old school feel is gone. And Jim Cornette might not like it, but it's gone. And it's gone forever. You'll have guys like FTR, but it's also why you'll have guys like FTR do a little bit of the flippy shit. It's yeah. why you have a guy like MJF who has absolutely killed everything he's been in still have to do shit like that because if he don't it's it's like the, the videos of hulk hogan you see in uh new japan oh my god Ridiculous. where you're like oh my god he could actually move i didn't know it um and nowadays hulk hogan would be diving over the top rope with his his crutch in aw uh because people would know we know about it now. Back then, it was not. It, could you imagine, like, back then, if social media was it is now, oh my and God. people were sharing those videos, Hulk Hogan would have to do shit like that because people would know he could do it. <laughs> like, he Yo, would he's have like to, bouncing off the rope. Like, he would have to. Was like, he would have to sprinkle yeah. in that shit because people know he could do it. You know, it's it's like the Young Bucks. They're not everybody's cup of tea, but I could tell you one thing. Whenever I used to go watch shows live with them on it, they were exciting as hell. Oh, hell yeah. They were exciting as hell. And now, all these people that they did all this crazy shit in front of, in front of 500 people, 1,000 people, 2,000 people, whatever, they're now doing it on TV constantly. So they have to one up themselves, and you're going mm-hmm. to get a Dante Martin breaking his ankle because those guys Gross. need to do shit like that. Um, but that's the world we live in nowadays. You need that. We are not uh, fans in general are not going to be okay with watching the Young Bucks do a bunch of collar and elbow tie ups and a bunch of mat no. wrestling for 20 minutes when they just watch them dive off. A ladder on top of a ladder onto a table. Yeah, it's nice to sprinkle every thing. once in a while. Like let's say, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is like Shawn Michaels versus Kurt Angle, right? How much time do you see Shawn do the flippy, fast moving style, and then he gets to Kurt Angle and it's like, oh wow, yeah, I always forget that Shawn Michaels can do the mat wrestling stuff. He just doesn't do it because that's not his character. He has to bring it out for this now, so it's like a breath of fresh air. Right, and I, AEW does do that. Pretty well. No, Siri. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks but for yeah. being on the show, Siri. Yeah, no one asked you, Apple. <laughs> damn. Uh, but he's like, I almost bought WWE too. Like, no. All right, we might have a future guest that's on a Apple Plus show. Stop. <laughs> but maybe but, not anymore. I don't know. But mm-hmm. that's the. I guess that's the point of all this is when shit like that was happening. Again, social media. YouTube, yeah. all this stuff was not quite where it is today. Where your your uh, cell phones, you know, it's so easy to record high quality videos to be able to see shit. You're not watching some grainy video from somebody's flip phone, or somebody had a camcorder at a show and they weren't supposed to, um, you know, and you're downloading it on LimeWire to watch it, and then you get a virus instead of actually watching the the video. Yeah, um, that. <laughs> Man, did I just age myself there? Uh, uh, both of us, yeah. I think I got three more gray hairs on this side. Uh, but yeah, so like, I don't know. Ed, the world we live in, wrestling would never be the same. It just won't. Um, but I can tell you, I'd rather watch something from a fan who grew up watching like me, and him try 
to make things good. Uh, that's why we got CM Punk. That's why we got Brian mm-hmm. Daniels, and that's why we got Kenny Omega. That's why we got Chris Jericho, because no matter how much people might hate him now, Chris Jericho is who he is, and we all love him, uh, for better or for worse. He might not be your favorite, but he's 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 that guy. Um, he, he, you know, they, he's given us so many of our guys, and some of them don't work out. Uh, Miro, uh, Andrade, you know, those mm-hmm. guys, like, it sucks. And it's the same reason why I didn't want to see Jay White there. Um, I feel like there's too many people. But can you get mad at them trying too hard and failing or giving us shit and saying, no, 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 you don't hate it, you like it. And that's 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 the funny thing about all of this. Anybody who hates on AEW because they're trying too hard and failing, you got problems. <laughs> You just got, I just don't, I, it blows my mind that there's people out there. I understand preferring one product over the other, but to call yourself a wrestling fan and not a WWE fan, a wrestling fan and annoyed that they're trying too hard. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I I just don't get it. I've, I've never felt like AEW stopped trying. Shit has not worked out. And it's clear as day. Things have not worked out. Guys have gotten yeah. injured. Guys have signed there for the complete wrong reason. Um, a lot of shit's happened. But like um, management has failed in certain degrees. And let's not lie, Tony Khan has been his own worst enemy on more than one occasion. Yeah, but I did. I do have to agree with you. Like the, the um again, <laughs> I love how our WWE centered episodes turn into AEW. Yeah, of course. Um, well. <laughs> But like that Jonathan Gresham um, interview that just oh, came out yeah. about the ROH I was that yesterday. Mm-hmm. thing. Uh, since we'll never, uh, we'll probably we won't do a full episode on this. So I, I can talk about this now because I can tell you when we get into next week's episode, there's so much shit and so much possibility that we probably won't yeah. get to this part. Uh, so it came out Jonathan Gresham finally did an interview talking about what happened with him and with Tony Khan, and he basically took a lot of the blame himself. He said he was in a weird place. He had family stuff that nobody really knew what was going on. He said Tony Khan allowed him to do his events that um, he had scheduled after ROH failed before Tony Khan went and bought it, and they allowed him to do his stuff, and he felt like um, as as the ROH champion and because of the stuff he's done – he was trying to get a hold of Tony and, and and he just wasn't able to. And he said when he finally did get into a room with him, he did not act professional and he kind of went off the handle, but he was feeling disrespected because he felt like he was getting a run around. I think we've all been there in those type of situations. I, he seems to basically understand that Tony probably was just busy. He was just, it got ROH. There's a lot of shit happening. He felt like by that point he had been in the same area as Tony too many times that he should have been able to see him, but he clearly doesn't know why, if, when, where, or but, and he felt like he did not react the way he would have today um, because of other factors, not just that. Mm -hmm. Um, So he basically said he even respected the way Tony, when he finally did leave, um, that Tony basically said, "Hey, I know you're a good person, you know. Um, yeah, this is no not hard feelings. Are, yeah. yeah, no, no hard feelings. Um, this doesn't close the door on any future stuff, you know. Yeah, you know, we'll leave it open." And he said, "You could clearly you could tell that Tony has had been in <laughs> the professional athlete and dealt with a lot of personalities because he just he was like, hey, 'Hey, I'm not going to hold a grudge over this. I get it. You know, shit happens. It's understandable.'" Um, so it's just funny, like, because a lot of people were angry about that to finally hear what happened. You know, uh, you, you hear a lot of these referees and, and wrestlers talk about how they've never had a company pay for their hotel and their airfare quite like AEW does. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Dax posted something when people said, like, he put, like, a, a quote, like, saying, like, oh, you know, they only they just decided to stay at the WrestleMania. So I, I don't know, something like that. And he said, he said, yeah, or uh, oh, they only decided to stay if they gave him the titles. And he was like, yeah, it has nothing to do with the schedule being better that I get to be around my family. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not on the road as much. I actually get to see my family more in this situation. And he's given me a chance to change the landscape of wrestling, which is true. AEW allows really are, those yeah. guys to change what wrestling is. Because wrestling had died a long time ago. It just has. Wrestling itself died a long time ago. WWE is not wrestling. It, it's It's... It's kind of like people who say NBA is not basketball. Um, you know, if you really want to watch basketball, you, you watch high school. Uh, you don't even watch AAU. You watch high school basketball, some college basketball. But you get to the NBA, they say it's not basketball anymore. Because now what kids know as basketball is NBA, which now college has become more like NBA because you have kids growing up only knowing NBA basketball, only know AAU basketball. They own, that's all they know. That's what they consider basketball. So now you have kids growing up thinking WWE is wrestling. WWE is entertainment. WWE is a form of wrestling, but it's not wrestling. And that's where we've kind of run into where WWE has become synonymous, synonymous with wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, and AEW is like, now, nah. uh-uh. this is what wrestling is. This is what's going on. This is the independent wrestling that the people who still enjoy wrestling go to these shows and go watch. This is the stuff that has not gotten TV time that now we're finally putting out there on TV. And it might not be everybody's cup of tea. And it won't because a lot of people think WWE is wrestling. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's, I don't know. Uh, that was very, very weird tangent on this episode but that's our a- AEW segment of the yeah. <laughs> of of the the day. Um, it 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 fail. It does not fail. I, the, that Vince McMahon episode, we end up talking about AEW a lot. Or it's um, hard not to like they're they're the biggest thing other yeah, than WWE. I, but uh, again, we we are a wrestling podcast. We are not a sports entertainment podcast. True. Um, we 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 clearly do not pay as much attention to WWE as we do AEW. Um, like I said, I, I think the more we get back into recording, which I fully expect us to do this on a weekly basis again, mm-hmm. uh, for those of you that missed us, um, and and on top of that, I know, uh, I know Dalton gave us a shout out and said he was uh, excited. Listen, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he was going to listen to us. Uh, we we may need to do a draft number two. Uh, just putting it out there to you guys because. I had a lot of high hopes for that, and then I got very busy, and I think my stepdad passed like right after that happened because we had some interviews like, lined like up, really right after, yeah. And then we just, I, you know, I got busy, and then the lifting and all this other stuff. Uh, so all the shit we did, if we really went back and looked at that draft, um, I don't think the rules apply to most of those people anymore. A lot of them are not with the <laughs> companies that we had, so either I or use permanently almost. So maybe, maybe. Uh, and and if you are if either one of you are listening to this, um, I I want a response after you hear it. So now yeah. I truly know if you listen or if you're just promoting us. So <laughs> I I I'm calling you guys out for another future episode. Same rules, just updated rosters. We do the same shit, and then hopefully we can finally I can finally do what I was originally going to do with Fire Pro Wrestling or voting or whatever. Um, I will find a better way to handle that than I than I did last time. But now, see, we, we got the butterflies out of the way. We did it once. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a fantasy football guy. I can't, I felt like I went into that more prepared than everybody. And That's it, true. It was uh, <laughs> they uh, yeah. So um, I'm calling you guys out for that. Um, and also Walton, if you're listening, I already told you, you're coming back for a future episode. Uh, so there's that out there. Look for that. I haven't even talked to you about this, Carlos, but I uh, want to talk about uh, maybe uh, celebrities, um, our favorite celebrities in wrestling. Uh, we were talking Ooh. about because uh, I was saying how Logan Paul might be the best celebrity wrestler we've ever seen. And and he was bringing up Pat McAfee and then Bad Bunny mm. uh, was yeah, talked yeah. about. Um, so we were talking. I don't know how we want to do that if we want to do, you know. Uh, I think uh, Allinger, and I don't even think you listen, but he was also there, and he said uh, <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, like a Mount Rushmore or a top five or something Ooh, like that." I like that. You know, I like so, everyone's personal, like yeah. So, so <laughs> we can get into that. 
Um, so that's another. We have another episode. interview that I've been talking to someone who was appeared on Young Rock that should be coming up, and I'm yeah. going to start working on another interview with uh, someone who's on an Apple TV Plus show, oh, Monster man. Factory. I had two different people waiting for interviews around the time that we stopped. Um, yeah. So, I, and I don't. I, I'm assuming they'd still be up for coming on, including yeah. one that I have a very funny story for that I'm very looking forward to talk to him about when uh we went to go see him him beat mecca for the the mcw <laughs> title true. um so yeah now i'm excited to be back i i we needed to talk AEW and talk about the future yep. with such a gloomy episode and it's funny it's not <laughs> the sale doesn't make this gloomy no um it it is it is the very brazen decision from day one to say Vince McMahon is back where he belongs back where he, he quote unquote was, they made it seem like he's going to continue his position that he technically was not in the day before. Yeah. Literally like, like not legally before. he was old. I, I don't know. Legally, whatever term officially, he was not that guy. So for them to talk about like he'll continue his position, we were all under the impression he was not in that position anymore. That he retired, he He's only done. came back to sell. He didn't come back to be the chairman. Gear. He came back to mediate a sale because of his stockholder status. That's what it was supposed to be. So to act like he's continuing the position he retired from. It very much endeavor. I can understand why they bought the company because that very much was a Vince McMahon WWE storyline. Just forget everything you just seen. Just yep, forget yep. it. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Yeah, look over there. <laughs> Didn't happen. This this guy's been healed for three weeks. Nah, no, he's been a good guy. Don't look. His, he's got a different shirt on. He's coming out <laughs> happy. He's not angry this week. It's okay. This this guy had no. He don't. He don't There's have nothing to see they're, here. <laughs> they're not a tag team anymore. What are you talking about? They didn't just tag the last three weeks. Nah, that you dreamt it. It's all right. Just just remember what happened last month. Don't remember what happened last week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they very much pulled a Vince McMahon storyline with this sale. It's just hey, let's put Vince front and center on ESPN and talk about this. Don't don't worry about it. you know. Let's just throw it right in your fucking face that this is yep. happening. Like. They very much could have allowed this to happen quietly. <laughs> they very really so. could have, and I don't. We could have never seen Vince McMahon again on anything. Vince McMahon could and just have, be like, "Oh, he's got the job." All right. He could have helped with the sale of this company without it being so out publicly. He could have. He could have fucking been named chairman while triple h was there or fucking nick khan was there who's supposed to be the dana white nick khan could have been the guy sitting there on espn nah yeah mm -hmm. no no nope. it had to be vince apparently it had to be uh, uh, his had, ego and I, I don't think it's just vince i think it's espn i think it's endeavor because vince mcmahon is wwe nobody knows the fuck nick khan is Nobody knows who he is. If Nick sure. Khan sat there, what the fuck does that mean to anybody? Uh, they they probably like give us Vince McMahon. If not Vince McMahon, can we get Hulk Hogan here? Like <laughs> John Cena? Yeah. Will John Cena sit here? You know, can we have somebody people know? Can we have Roman Reigns? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Triple H. You know, I'm sure he was busy more with Monday Night Raw until Vince showed up and wrote ripped up his scripts. Um, but like, yeah. Uh, can, can we have somebody people know? Uh, Nick Khan, who the fuck's this dude? Um, you know, Shane might have been there had he not. Fucking torn his quad like fucking his dad. Oh, hold on. Okay. So we're going to go back to WWE. Now that we've I, we've spoken on this Endeavor sale, and, mm -hmm. and I truly believe, I mean, we're an hour and 15 minutes into this episode, and I'd say we spoke on the actual sale maybe 15 minutes. So thank you, Vince. We learned from you. We gave you 15 minutes worth of the episode topic. Um, <laughs> but I will talk about WrestleMania in the sense that 
we talked about the difference between Saturday and Sunday, right? Um, and, and I texted you and said I thought Saturday was way better, which it was. Yeah, it, it was. was yeah. Saturday was way better. Um, Sunday had its issues, which was not the issue that most people had. Roman should have won. I will say this until I'm blue in the face. Roman should have won. Roman should have won. Roman won, and that's who it should have been. I'm sorry. We don't need every single WrestleMania to end with the good guy on top and walking out. We didn't need Cody to come back. It would have been fucking pointless in my mind to have Cody come back and be this John Cena-esque running all over everybody because the moment he wins the title and the moment he beats the next guy, the moment we start calling him John Cena and they start booing him like they did in AEW, they need him to continuously chase way longer than a couple months. So, getting that shit out of the way. Pat McAfee, way better than the Shane McMahon. Why they still think that Shane McMahon is a draw, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I didn't get it years ago. The moment Shane McMahon got any gray in his hair, he got very, very, I don't care to see him. He, he is not, he is built in the worst possible way. He's built like current day Kurt Angle. Um, yeah, he's not, he is bigger, but he's not like his dad big. He's like a guy that's had way too many neck surgeries big. And like, he only works on like three parts of his body when he works out. He looks very disproportionate. His punches always sucked, but at least he was younger and energetic. And now he looks like a guy who's been winded when he's jumping around for a little bit. It was awful. I mean, the- he's like going to handle it. Yeah. Snoop Dogg, who clearly was not prepared for that. No. Looked saved that segment. He looked just as athletically gifted as Shane did. And Shane was meant for that segment. That's yeah. how bad that's how bad that is. Stop bringing him the fuck back. I, yeah, I that, stop that, it. And nope. and even saying that Shane looked horrible in his segment, obviously he tore in his squad too. Snoop, because of that level, like you just said, looked incredible. <laughs> <laughs> We knew he was yeah. not prepared for it. I don't care what I don't care what any of his stuff looked like. No, absolutely. I mean, not. and and the Miz obviously and had shout a lot out to, to Miz, do with yeah. that. To to, oh, to make yeah. it to make Best those punches and everything. For Oliver. Yeah, mm-hmm. he he made that look good, you know, too. Especially for something that had to have happened just randomly. But like to have Shane come out and then thank you for that reception. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get the appeal. I nope. understand he's Vince McMahon's son. But he was never that good in the ring. He was never even okay in the ring. He was just... We were just surprised that Vince McMahon's son could jump from one rope to the other. And that was about it. Mm-hmm. And it was the whole him dancing around or and shit bumps. like that. Yeah, out of nowhere. Like... But now, I don't I don't get it. I don't get why... Like, what was that last year at the Royal Rumble where he was supposed to come out? Like, oh, I my just God. Don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. They had so many other options, and as much as I wanted it to be like Cardona, um, oh my god, you know, like why wasn't it like L.A. Knight? Why wasn't oh it? Oh my god, Bobby Lashley. The hell, why wasn't it fucking Booker T, Michael Cole? Yeah, any, yeah. Like I don't know, somebody. Corey Mike, Graves, yeah. Dude, how hilarious would it have been if Michael Cole came up there and did that? Like because yeah. he talked about how Pat McAfee's un- that he's one of the two announcers that's undefeated, and then Pat McAfee just beat him the night before. So now Michael Cole comes up. Hell, I-, I realize George Kittle probably couldn't, but he was out in the crowd again. Have him come in. Yeah, I know. I- he could have done what the fuck Snoop Dogg R- run- did. Yeah, run ha- the spot again. Yeah, yeah, just have him fucking clothesline him, dude. Dude, literally do the people's elbow and then pin him. I mean, the fucking, I-, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get the appeal, of Shane. But that, I think, dropped Sunday so far below Saturday. Just on because it's the same segment. Let's be honest here; it's the same fucking yeah. thing. How you go from Pat McAfee to Shane McMahon, and think it, that's why I said Vince had his hand oh, like, this Sunday. Is good. It was his fucking son mm-hmm. out there. Like I just don't I, exactly. I don't, no, no, that that was like the thing that hit me the most. I was like, oh, he's back. Like the oh, wit- he's back full time. I didn't mind the women's tag match. 
But it was, no, it was like, right. I don't know if Shayna got hurt during it or if she was already hurt because she was, mm. like, visibly limping when they were, like, celebrating at the end. Um, I believe, and I don't know if it was true or kayfabe or whatever. Again, I don't pay enough attention to WWE. I literally did a prediction episode last week when I have not been paying attention to the product leading up to it. Um, where Ronda Rousey was actually hurt, I think. So, like, I feel like that was oh, that yeah. was why they kind of left them to out of most of the match. And then they ended up... I mean, it was one of those heel strategy thing. But, like, if you notice, they weren't involved in most of that match. Um, and then they went over. And for that purpose, I, I didn't like that match being together anyway. So, for the purpose yeah, no, of the I, match, I, I was issue. okay with it. Like I said, I already told you what my Hell in a Cell thing was. Uh, but Saturday, I didn't have... Other than the, the men's tag... I didn't have anything on Saturday that I was like, eh, on. Yeah, no, I the and even that the like the men's tag surprise was surprisingly good for me. The men's um, tag was better than the women's tag, which happened yes, on Sunday. Hundred percent. Uh, I think it wasn't even like a negative surprise or anything like that. The most surprising thing was how good uh, Rhea and Charlotte was. Yeah, but uh, that was my match of the well, night. <sighs> And that was actually, I'm going to put this on par with Shane showing up. Not not Shane, blow, Shane blowing out his knee or his quad or whatever fuck he did was actually one of the funnier moments of the weekend. I thought it was hilarious. Um, I Kudos to him for, for doing that on command because I, I, appreciate, the, I appreciate the entertainment <laughs> value that Shane gave me. But um, I could not stand the Charlotte smiling and clapping at the end i think that wasn't supposed to be on camera and the camera guy happened to be on there i think it was done on purpose by her i think she, oh, she was think? on camera i think well, I, well, her being pissed but i think she was proud of event. herself i think she no, was like i i think it was done on purpose i think it was done on purpose i think it was spiteful i it, this is rick flair's daughter we're talking about here i think it was done on purpose Fair. i think it was a very self-serving move it was it was it was much on the and, and whether or not there's actual truth to what actually happened. Remember the whole Austin Aries, um, oh, John we Morrison. That on Morrison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and Impact. like, and I think it's come out recently where he's talked about how like people don't realize that that was all planned and shit like that. And whether that's true or not, who the fuck knows? It's very easy when people aren't booking you to now start saying, "Hey, that was planned. I'm just oh, a yeah. really good." Oh actor. yeah, I totally meant to do that. You just haven't booked me for years over this, but now I'm finally going to tell you the truth. Um, Charlotte was so angry. She was not in the main event. Visibly angry. You could see it at the beginning of that match. She looked disinterested. She looked not happy. And it was clear. And they fucking put on a hell of a match. And I felt like she did that shit on purpose. I felt mm -hmm. like she was like, exactly, we just put a main event match on. You didn't put us on last. I am i don't care. I'm going to break character right now. And I'm not going to lie to you, it 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 felt a little bit... Was that last year we got Sasha and Bianca, or was that two years ago? Uh, Two years two ago, years because ago. Bianca L and Becky was last year. And la uh, two years ago, that was Saturday Night's main event, where last year it was Austin and Owens. Yeah. Um. So, two years ago, we kind of got that same feel, where they both were smiling, they both were crying at the end of the match. They were, But that was for a different reason and i felt like charlotte flair wanted to make that about her um mm -hmm. i felt like she felt disrespected they didn't put him on last she felt like in her mind they proved that they should have been on last although i still don't believe that should have been on last i don't believe that it was a better match than the next match that happened i think it's still for them for Owens and Zayn and the Usos to put on a match that the crowd was into after that match happening before it just goes to show they how fucking tired, good yeah. that match was. Mm -hmm. Because we've had good matches lose steam because of how good the match before it was. And that you know what it, 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 I feel like it, it is? Is that, uh, remember Batista and Undertaker? What's that? WrestleMania like 20 something right? really like 26 bad. 27 really or something like that the numbers yeah or maybe like 24 something like that but they similar to what you're saying like batista and Undertaker multiple times said 
they should have been the main event. They should have been main event. And that match is probably match the night for that WrestleMania for me. Um, I would have to go back and watch that whole WrestleMania, but I even to this day, I mean, even right after, I was like, that's, that's the match of the night. Um, rarely match of the night, though, from a technical standpoint, even sometimes storyline standpoint, is the main event this Saturday. Rhea and Charlotte, to me, from a technical standpoint, was the match of the night. The storyline match, though, was Owens and, and Sammy, which also a great technical match as well. But like that moment of them winning the tag titles right there and everyone popping big, that far exceeds any technical part of the matches of both of them. Yeah. And that's, I, I think it ruined it for me. It became too much about her having that proud woman. We should have been the main event moment. And it didn't, to me, it didn't come off as genuine. It just didn't. I, I, I can understand why some people would think it would be, and maybe she was overwhelmed in the moment. But let's be honest here. If MJF put on the match of his life, the fucking dude did a cow- dog collar match with CM Punk, who apparently was his hero growing up. Like, did we get him overwhelmed with joy and breaking character at the end of that match? Because he did a childhood thing and he put on a fucking hell of a match that did a lot of, you know, I mean, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, did, yeah, yeah. did we see, like, the Usos out, like, looking up, being like, yeah. Yeah, he, we did that was, thing, yeah. These guys deserve these titles. Like, we just finally finished this storyline. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I felt like the Sasha Bianca, it, it warranted it. Um... Bailey and uh, Sasha, I want to say the Iron Woman match. Um, mm. Or Iron Man match, which I think was like the first time they, you know, when they called it an Iron... I remember when they got flowers and shit at the end and it was just like a big deal. Like, I understood that. Um, This was a women's title match that was put on Saturday of WrestleMania. It was very it, good. It, it was very to good. To me, if there was no bloodline storyline, like anything to that level, to that up teeth level, like this, it felt like this crescendo of like a storyline, like this um, major impactful storyline we haven't had in so long. I would put one of the women's titles in the main event on Saturday. Yeah. Only because like in my head, one women like, right. like alternate. Yeah. So like the SmackDown, and let's say Universal and WWE title were still separate. Universal can be like second and last one, and then no. let's say the Raw Women's title is the main event for and the I, night one. And I've always versa. been of the mindset, regardless, even though we just talked about this last week, that it's not always been true. Um, the whole Royal Rumble winners and stuff like that. Uh, hold on, did we talk about this last week, or did I have this conversation with Walton? Now I'm not even 100% Maybe sure. Walton, but um, are we probably on the same page that the Royal Rumble winners should have night one, night two? Yeah, but like. There's a lot of uh, the percentages of Royal Rumble winners that have actually main event at WrestleMania are very that, that's way lower than you think. There's mm. been a lot. Okay, so yeah, I think Char- yeah. Charlotte. I think it's funny we recorded this on Tuesday of last week for, for um yeah for WrestleMania, and I'm pretty sure the interview with Charlotte came out afterwards. So all this conversation I actually have with Walton, not with you on this episode, but <laughs> Charlotte. Made a b- pretty big deal saying they should main event when it got finally got named that Sammy and them were going to main event. And this was like on Friday or some shit. So uh, that would make sense. That was after I already fucking posted we that. We recorded our stuff, yeah. <laughs> Not only recorded it, posted it. Uh, but so she went on kind of a tangent about that. And and it was her with, with one of the, the guys that now does their shows, uh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Satin. Satin. And he says, yeah, 99.9% of the time, the Royal Rumble winner um, main events. And, and it's just not its not true. I, I think the number's more like 60% of the time they do. Like, it's its its way... Ever since they started... Because the, the one number I seen, I want to say it was 15 of them since the beginning of Royal Rumble have not main yeah. event at WrestleMania. 15 times. And and I think that number would be like seventeen or eighteen, but back like the first couple ones they um they didn't get like title opportunities, like when Hacksaw won it, 
Oh yeah, um, and then like, afterwards Rick, you got the title. Ric Flair for won the for the Rumble. title, so that one doesn't. That, you know, he didn't main event, so those ones I don't really count. But it's like fifteen times they've not main evented WrestleMania. Or That's shit, a lot. Just recently, Triple H when he won, that, that it, was for the title. It, it, there was literally like a like an eight out of ten year span where LT not, and Bigelow. Yeah, yeah. I um, was it uh. I keep wanting to call him Andrade, but not the, the other. Oh yeah, that was the uh, opening Del, match. Del Rio. Yeah. Uh, Del, Del Rio. Rio didn't win. Alberta. Uh, Del Rio didn't. Um, it, I think one of the years Cena didn't. He he didn't. Uh, one of the years Stone Cold won. He didn't. Um, Vince McMahon didn't. Uh, like there, there's just they're going down a list, and, and literally there's like 15 times that this happened. Um. So like. That number is not as clear as day. So Charlotte had an issue because she said they were saying ninety nine point nine, and that number is not real. It's not. It's happened plenty of times. It didn't just start happening now that we have the women's and the men's. It's always been a thing, where it's not as guaranteed that they're going to be the last match. Now WWE, for years, has called like the last four matches main events, and they've done it so they can loophole this. Yeah. They've literally started the night and called the main event before. Um, they've, well, yeah, they've spread loop, out through the night. They've oh, looped no. the shit out of the word main event. Um, so it's just not a thing. So that's right. We did not have this conversation. So I'm so happy that I started bringing it up that we can now finish mm-hmm. with this because it's not a thing. It's not a real thing. It's a thing that we've all built up in our head because it says title shot at WrestleMania. It does not say main event at WrestleMania. And it doesn't always happen that way. There, um, who was it? Uh, Hogan, Hogan Rock. Didn't that main event? No. That WrestleMania? Or no? Did that? No. No, 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 that didn't. Mm. But that was one of the times, I think, where Royal Rumble winner went on afterwards. And it probably shouldn't mm. have. <laughs> you no, know, like it that should match. have been Rock, Hogan. But that's that what I'm night. saying. Like, there has been a lot of storylines that have surpassed what that is. And, and we I mean, also, wanna... when's the last time a tag match to, for the tag titles? Was the main event? Yeah, I don't know if ever. That's that's an AAW thing. Yeah. So you like, know? um, yeah. So it wasn't as much as we'd like it to be that way. History has shown us it's not. It's it's about half the time, a little over half the time, they do. So I think that's what annoyed me more about her reaction at the end is because she kind of threw a hissy fit on there and said, uh, I won't call it hissy fit, but I'll call it a hissy fit. Um, about she deserves it because it's the women's title and it's the Royal Rumble winner and that's the way it's always been when history has shown us otherwise if you actually just do a little bit of research. But again, it's WWE wanting you to, you know. And, and Think, he, yeah. uh, it, I'm telling you this is what history was. Don't don't look it up. I, I know you yeah. can prove me wrong. So, um, yeah. So it ruined the end for me. What should have been and was a great match it was i felt like that was self-serving now that you know that bit of information a little bit more does mm. it does it make you think differently about seeing her there at the end I, they did focus on her a lot which is surprising because i feel like in the initial smile and i think i don't in my head i was like oh we're not supposed to see this i think the camera guys accidentally turned to her thinking she oh she's going to be upset and in my head, she's like, I'm like, oh, my God, she's just so happy to give this moment to Rhea. And she's in the ring by herself for that moment. You know, like Charlotte's already out of the ring. Um, I can see where you come from. Yeah. Once you see it like two more times, like her, I, and she's smiling still. And I think I think she no did production it. being like, yo, you're going to be on camera like point two seconds. Like, just I think she did it on purpose. And then I think they were like, well, now let's roll with it and that's why I think they showed her two more times because at that point now you can't undo it I, I mean you can we've seen them do it before they've taken away yeah. chance they've taken away <laughs> yeah. stuff for future so. but now everybody had seen that you've already seen it it's already mm-hmm. out there so now let's focus on it a little bit more so now WWE's like let's focus on it a little bit more so now when she comes back we can make her come back as a like you know good guy yeah true uh, I mean she was just she happy for the other daughter woman. and yeah, she I, does feel like she's untouchable to a certain degree yeah. as well, right? Like she can talk about Andrade on TV, even though he's in another company. You know, man. she can do whatever the fuck she wants. Like, right? 
Yeah. So, yeah, I, that's why I said it, it, it went from, like, that was fucking awesome to, like, come on now. Come <laughs> on. I, I'm, I'm going to give you a compliment, Charlotte. Don't fucking do this. Don't, <laughs> don't do this. And I... It, it, the whole idea that it was a bigger... Come on. Charlotte was in a triple threat that main event at WrestleMania for both titles. Yeah. Did, did, this this match right here is what overwhelmed her so much to break character. Not that. Not the first time women have ever main event at WrestleMania and is a triple she's threat one of for them, two yeah. titles. No, 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 no. That didn't. That did not emotionally overwhelm yeah, her. Yeah, for the uh, two two halves or a half, pardon me, of the four horsewomen in the ring together yeah. for the main event. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, that's that's no, I see it. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just yeah, it, the whole the whole time. Like once I got to, I was like Monday, even before Raw. I was thinking, I was like, man, like that's crazy in my head. I th- I think WWE put like, what did you think of night one? Like, what was the best match? And in my head, I was like, I even said it. I was like, Rhea versus Charlotte. Like, what was the best moment? Kevin Owens and Sammy winning. But yeah. that doesn't take away from that match. That match is incredible as well. That moment is just, like, encompasses why that was the main event. And like, that, that makes sense. And that's what WrestleMania should be. You should have two main event level main events. Like, mm-hmm. to end the show. I, I always feel like you need to have them. You need that one that's going to get the crowd... If they weren't already like, oh my god, that was awesome, and then this next match needs to feel bigger. And had you done those things in reverse, it would have taken away a lot of the steam from Rhea and Charlotte. So I felt like it was done smart. If you have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn win, um, the crowd is emotionally drained. drained. Yeah, oh yeah. So it's hard. Uh, they would have gotten into that match, but I don't know that the crowd was into it as much. The crowd can get emotionally invested into that storyline after watching a hell of a match. It, it's kind of where my mind and I don't was the hell in the cell was right before the main event, right? Yes. Um, on Sunday, but did they do the Miz Shane McMahon thing in between? I believe that was before. Ooh, maybe I think that was right before the main event. I think I, I don't remember. Um. I, I could be remembering that incorrectly. Uh, but I think it was the Hell in a Cell was the last match before it. Um, mm. I think. And and again, I watched this on replay, and I watched it in bits and pieces. Um, if the Hell in a Cell was the one before it, which I felt like the Gunther, McIntyre, Sheamus should have been the one before it. For the same exact reasons. Because yeah. that would have had the crowd so into that match. But then because the Cody emotion and Roman Reigns thing. Would have pulled the, the crowd right back into it. I felt like they almost purposely didn't want to put the Gunther match on before it. For the reasons why sometimes they don't want to do shit like that. Because they don't want to take away. But I think the crowd was so emotionally invested in Cody. Um that it, would, yeah, it, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, the Bloodline storyline, it, it, it just needed to. It, it, it just needed to be the storyline. It needed to book in both nights. It's also one of the issues I have sometimes with booking of WrestleMania is you have some storyline, you have some wrestling. The Rey of Charlotte was more wrestling than storyline. The Bloodline um, Sammy KO was more storyline. You went storyline kind of storyline on Sunday. The Hell in a Cell was mm-hmm. storyline. And then Roman and Cody, whether it's a good, bad, or indifferent, that was not going to be a wrestling clinic. It was storyline. It was based on emotion. It was two separate storylines. Yeah. <laughs> which I still stand by. It was Cody's storyline and it was Roman's storyline. They were not interconnected. But at least they had a storyline. That Rhea and, and Charlotte had no separate st- i mean ray's storyline was in the hell in the cell and dominic more than it was in that match um so we're like gunther drew mcintyre sheamus there's a little bit of connection between those guys but it, it that was going we knew that was going to be a wrestling match that was going to be mm-hmm. a hard hitting match uh so i felt like that that probably should have been there um but 
again, nitpicking. It was a hell of a WrestleMania after a hell of a yeah. Royal Rumble. And um, it it's sad to see it go. <laughs> Which it will because now that Vince uh. now that Vince is like has a company backing him, it's different. It's gonna be different. It's uh. no longer the him kind of sort of than the back. He's now gonna be front and fucking center and all the time. It's just gonna happen, and, and they're just gonna fucking ignore it. And it's just unfortunately, it's true. It it was a really good run while we had it. Now now the next question is. What does WWE next year look like? What does our WrestleMania look like? What does WrestleMania 40 look like for us? What does the night after? What does the Raw after in Philly look like at the Wells Fargo Center? Like Vince has usually been good at the Raw after. That's why, like, I, uh, weirdly enough, I expect the WrestleMania to dis- disappoint and then um, Raw to be better. Um, that's what's been pretty consistent under Vince. That's what we got in Texas. Yeah. I mean, we got True. fucking Triple H Roman Reigns main event in that shit. Like, that was not a very good WrestleMania. But being there, I, I will tell you this from experience, being there, it don't matter. It's like going to a live baseball game. The fucking game sucks, but you're there. You're out in the sun. You're eating hot dogs and drinking beer. Suddenly, Just you're you're, out, yeah. you're into it a way more than you ever would have been if you were sitting at home and you could flip the channel. So, that's true or you can walk away for a minute yeah. and so or pause it or whatever so being there um is just a different beast regardless of what the product is so it'll be fun yeah. we'll be there next year yeah so um yeah since we are going very very long um not very long this is pretty typical we're usually long hour and <laughs> in the tooth anyway yeah well it's because we literally did not talk about the title episode that much um, <laughs> that's fair but yeah so we got big things a coming next week we'll absolutely be talking about all in um and then hopefully we can return get on, we can get on some of these uh interviews, interviews and, and, and like i said i wrestlemania season just happened i want to uh, redraft if if wwe can act like the last time didn't happen we can act like the first draft didn't happen and we no. want uh we want the ner- nerdiest part of ring guys we want them uh we want them back let's, let's, we can do like team do versus again. team as well yeah no nah, i don't want you on my team Fuck i you, did man. so much <laughs> i did so much better than you the first time i just i'm <laughs> just want to do that much better this time so uh, asa uh, asa he did so much better than me because he kept stealing my fucking <laughs> yeah oh man i i gotta figure out better better ways to steal too we yeah, were, see, go. we were we were new. We didn't really know each other that well. You know, the stealing. You know, we, we've now won <laughs> through one time. Maybe. Yep. Now we gotta do it again. We know each other's strategies a little bit more. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, anything else you want to cover? No, no. I mean, fuck Vince McMahon. Yeah. Fi- yeah. Fire. Hashtag fire Vince. Fire him. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. fire Vince. Please, got fire Vince. <laughs> so. Uh, on on that note, we'll uh, we'll see you in the see.